From Domino's to Dunkin's, Subway to KFC, American fast foods have definitely gone global. But the granddaddy of them all is McDonald's. Where we started was hamburgers and fries, and they were developed, you know, here in the U.S. for U.S. consumers. 125 years later, there are more than 33,000 restaurants in 119 different countries, which means that McDonald's has to do lots of homework to appeal to its international customers. It all starts at McDonald's training facility, Hamburger University, and test kitchens at the Illinois headquarters and around the world. Their mission, find the best local foods and recreate them Mickey D style. So no matter where you're from, you're gonna see these familiar tastes that you grew up with, along with some of McDonald's more classic tastes. So you get a little bit of both. And that happens whether you're in Latin America, Asia, Africa, even in Europe. You can sink your teeth into a McBaguette sandwich in France, beefalo russe in Moscow, a vegetarian McSpicy paneer in India, fiery pork bulgogi burger in South Korea, cheddar McMelt in Brazil, and barbecue McFeast in South Africa. And when a local flavor sells off the charts in one country, Mickey D's tries it out in others. What you're seeing is a lot more successful product launches happening much quicker in Asia. They have Thai sweet chili sauce. We've seen that become very popular around our system. It's transferred very well to the UK. But food's not the only edible export making a huge splash around the globe. Coca-Cola is the original international ambassador of American tastes. It all started in 1886 with one carbonated cola from Atlanta, Georgia. Today, we operate in more than 200 countries around the world, and you can enjoy one of more than 3,500 different products from the company, most of which are catered to local tastes. And these are drinks most of us have never heard of. Hot Georgia coffee in cans in Japan, caramely Schweppes malt in West Africa, and lemony tasting limka in India, just to name a few. Our R&D facilities in Shanghai, in Brussels, in Latin America, all look for what consumers want in those countries and those continents, and we deliver products that meet those tastes. At the world of Coca-Cola, you can sample 60 different flavors from around the world. And one thing becomes crystal clear. Everyone's taste buds have their own opinions. This one's good. Try this one. That one's a little better. <laughs> that is weird. I think it's sweet and it's fizzy. Sometimes it takes an expert to appreciate the origins and tastes of those foreign flavors. Like chef and restaurateur Richard Blaze, winner of Top Chef All-Stars. The birth of these from different regions is inspiring to me because as a chef, I consider my food to be global, so I'm constantly learning. First taste test to Africa with Stony Tango Easy. It's got a little bit of a depth to it. Not a ginger ale, it's not super sweet. I think something like this is gonna go excellent with pork or chicken, but it's like a, it's a light version of a ginger beer. How about the Sunfill from the East African nation of Djibouti? It's got a sort of uh, antiseptic, sort of uh, mouthwash sort of color to it. Wow, mouthwash was pretty close in a good way. It was just a palate cleanser, it's a refreshing thing. It's a far cry from South Africa's Bebo with a pineapple coconut vibe. Very, very sweet, certainly refreshing. You know what I would do with this? I would turn it into a sorbet. So I'd break out some liquid nitrogen and whip this up into a sorbet and it'd be a great sort of um, dessert. Next to Asia for a drink called Smart, made especially for China. So sort of melon, watermelon sort of uh, aroma to it. Not as sweet as it smelled, which to me, I, I really like that. But I think it's gonna work great with fried food, soy, uh, pork, um, spicy foods. Very different from the uber healthy Vegeta Beta from Japan. The European continent is just a few steps and sips away. Starting with the Kinley from Great Britain, it has a lightly carbonated lemon taste. It's not sweet, it's not gonna take over the dish. This would work great to mix cocktails with. And I just, I just love that sort of that, that backdrop of uh, bitter on the end of it. So it's got that fresh citrus, a little bit of sweetness to it, and this would work great with fish and chips. The most controversial soda of the bunch is simply called Beverly. The most popular, unpopular drink is probably Beverly from Italy, which has a, a bitter anise flavor taste to it. And so a lot of people are put off by that, but in Italy, it's very, very popular. Chef Blaze's wife, Jasmine, gives it a whirl. Yeah, it's, this is an adult beverage. <laughs> I think I can only have like one sip. 
Yeah, that would be it. <laughs> How about these guys from Cuba? It's kind of like sour. Not not the best one, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like lemon with a bad aftertaste. <laughs> bad aftertaste. And sometimes one look says it all. <laughs> but back to the expert. And it starts with a light sweetness, and then it finishes, you know, it's it's kind of bitter, right? I love that. This is one of my favorite things in the world right here. Beverly, you know, some people can't drink it, but this is perfect. And that's why Coca-Cola creates so many different drinks in different countries. What you like depends on what you grew up with. Americans tend to like the sweeter stuff, like Delaware Punch from Latin America. It's a fruit punch, not much carbonation. It's really good. Or Inca Cola, very popular in Peru. Fruity tastes like peaches almost. And sometimes taste can bring back sweet memories, like the Fanta pineapple from Greece. It's got a little pineapple, a little, little sweetness, a little bubbly. I think of being on the coast in Greece. I think of blue waters and being outside you know, on the coast and you know, having something like this re re refreshing. Practically a vacation in a bottle. Every culture has its own beloved flavors and comfort foods homegrown favorites that are now finding new audiences around the globe. And while one